Commander Precon decks are a great way to dive into the format, giving you a complete ready-to-play deck right out of the box. They're a great tool to gain insight on how you can begin building a Commander deck if you've never built one before, and many offer new and exciting strategies with each new set release. Once you've played your new deck a few times, you'll likely want to upgrade the deck, refine it, tweak it, make it more unique to you and your playstyle. In this series, we'll be taking a look at each of the Commander Precon decks, taking a deep dive into the nitty gritty and examining which cards work, which cards are duds, and which new cards you should look into adding in from your collection. My name's Flynn, and welcome to the Commander Precon Upgrade Guide, Bloomboro Edition. In this video, we'll be breaking down the Animated Army Precon deck, a red and green deck that seeks to use unorthodox artifacts and enchantments for unique value. The deck's primary commander is Bello, Bard of the Brambles, a 3-3 raccoon bard for one, a red and a green. He has one ability. During your turn, each non-equipment artifact and each non-aura enchantment you control with a mana value of 4 or greater becomes a 4-4 elemental creature in addition to its other types. It has indestructible, haste, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. This is a super cool ability that makes it relevant to have a deck full of artifacts and enchantments. Specifically, Bello asks you to include cards of these two types that have mana value of 4 or greater, which is in some ways counterintuitive to good commander deck building, but this could also bring about a unique style of play. See, these two card types have a plethora of powerful abilities at the 4 slot or higher, and giving these cards additional utility in the way of making them indestructible, hasty threats can be a really cool way to end games. One of our two backup commanders is Wildseer Scouring Maw, a 6-6 elemental wolf for 3 a red and a green. Wildseer has Trample, and it gives enchantment spells you cast from your hand, Cascade. Cascade is a triggered ability, where whenever you cast an enchantment spell from your hand, you exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card that costs less. You may cast that spell without paying its mana cost and return the other cards exiled this way to the bottom of the library in a random order. I really like Wild Seer. Beyond its pushed stats as a 6-6 six, six for 5 with Trample, it gives your specific spells Cascade. Enchantment decks are notoriously strong, and while this is a unique one in that we are in red-green rather than the usual white-green for enchantments, this offers us a bit of added value in getting us extra spells when we cast them. In moving Wildseer to the command zone, we are looking to move away from the artifacts in this deck and focus on more value enchantments that will be the main strategy. Our third possible commander out of the box is Grumgully the Generous. Grumgully is a 3-mana Goblin Shaman that has each other non-human creature you control enter with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Grumgully can be effective for non-human decks that want to go aggro with plus one plus one counters, but for this deck I'm not as much a fan of making this the main commander. He doesn't really synergize with what the other two commanders are looking to do, and so while I do feel need to mention him as a possible candidate for commander, I would strongly urge you to use either of the other two. Now for the sake of our upgrade guide, we are going to maintain Bello as our commander, though we may build a deck with Wildseer at a later time. In this next section, we're going to take a look at the best cards that are new to Magic from this particular Precon deck. These are some of the cards that either have good synergy with the deck's strategy, or are just all around good cards to have. You'll likely want to keep these in the deck as you begin swapping out cards. Alchemist's Talent is a 4 mana enchantment with the class subtype. At base level, when it enters, you create two tapped treasure tokens. For 2 mana, you can level it up to level 2, where it gains the static ability. Treasures you control can tap and sacrifice to add 2 mana of any color. Lastly, you can pay 5 to have it reach level 3, where wherever you cast a spell, if mana from a treasure we use to cast it, the class deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to each opponent. This adds so much additional value to treasures, as if they didn't bring enough on their own. We effectively have a delayed gold span dragon ability, and on that last level we can begin to burn opponents whenever we cast spells, so long as the mana produced by treasures was used. In a dedicated treasure producing deck, this can make for a ton of trouble. This is also a 4 mana enchantment, so Bello can then reanimate this to become a 4 4 with indestructible in haste that draws us a card whenever we connect with an opponent. Evercoat Earthsign is a 6 5 elemental bear for 5 mana with trample. It has two instances of Hideaway 3, where when it enters, you can look at the top three cards of your library, exile one face down, and put the other two on the bottom of your library in a random order, then do it again. Lastly, whenever the Earth Sign deals damage to a player, if there are cards exiled with it, you may play one of them without paying its mana cost. 
This can be a fun way to cheat mana costs. You get a lot of card selection here, looking at up to six cards, selecting two, and then whenever it deals combat damage, you can choose to play one for free. Because it says play and not cast, lands are also options you can use here. And that being said, you can hide away some pretty big juicy cards to cheat in later on that should your cuddly little buddy connect with an opponent. Prosperous Bandit is a 2-2 Raccoon Rogue for 3 mana with Offspring 1. As you cast the spell, if you pay an additional 1 mana, as the bandit enters, you create a token that's a copy of the bandit except it's a 1-1 token copy. It has first strike, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, create that many tapped treasure tokens. Again, we're making treasure tokens, and even though they do enter tapped, it's still making us treasure tokens. Between the original and the possible copy token, you may make up to 3 tokens per combat, which can be incredible ramp. Not to mention, we did talk about an enchantment earlier that wants us to use treasures for our mana, and this card is pretty sweet treasure producer. Pyre Swipe Hawk is a 5 mana 4 4 elemental bird with both flying and haste. Whenever it attacks, it gets plus X plus O until the end of turn, where X is the greatest mana value among artifacts you control. Whenever you X spend 6, you gain control of up to one target artifact for as long as you control the Pyre Swipe Hawk. Expend is a new mechanic to Bloomboro, where expending 6 occurs as you would cast your 6th total mana to cast spells during a turn. This can also trigger on opponent's turn. This is a pretty powerful beat stick. This one definitely wants you to play into more artifacts and enchantments, but you can also steal opponents' artifacts as you spend 6 mana during a single turn, which can then feed its attack trigger ability. This card having haste means that it can immediately attack, giving a great relevance at any point during a game. It also growing larger and having flying means that life totals will absolutely be threatened once this starts coming down. Rolling Ham Sphere is a 7 mana 4 4 vehicle with crew 3. It gains plus 1 plus 1 for each hamster you control. Whenever it attacks, you create 3 1 1 red hamster creature tokens, and then it deals X damage to any target, where X is the number of hamsters you control. I love this card. I love rodents, and this card creating hamster tokens gives us a tremendous amount of value. If you'll recall the card Mirror Battlesphere, a longtime mainstay in token decks, this very much feels like it emulates the Battlesphere in making tokens. This can, in the long run, wake you more, but what really works well for it is its ability to turn into a 4-4 elemental with Bellows ability. It's already a 4-4, and so this will circumvent the crew 3. You'll also get this tokens off of the attack trigger, and so this is a great synergy with our commander. Reign of Riches is a 5 mana enchantment that creates 2 treasure tokens as it enters. The first spell you cast each turn that has mana from a treasure spent to cast it has Cascade. We discussed what Cascade was earlier, but this is excellent card advantage for a treasure themed deck. Even if you aren't leaning heavily into treasure production, it only needs to have one treasure produced by a mana to get the cascade trigger. You do also have the ability to trigger this on your opponent's turn, so this does get around the first spell you cast each turn thing. Casting a spell for free is always value, and so this can be great mid to late game as a way to get some explosive turns. Thickest in the Thicket is a 5 mana enchantment that enters and puts X plus 1 plus 1 counters onto a target creature where X is that creature's power. And then at the beginning of your end step, you draw 2 cards if you control a creature with the greatest power or tied for the greatest power. This card has so many applications in this deck. First, I love plus 1 plus 1 counter synergies and this effectively doubles a target creature's power. If you want to build up a deck to utilize those counters, this is a great tool to use. You also get two cards to draw if you have the biggest creature at the end of your turn, which is tremendous value. In this deck, there is no reason that you shouldn't be able to draw those cards every single turn. In the next section, we're going to discuss some of the better reprints included in the deck. These will be the cards that you'll likely also want to keep in the deck, as they'll offer you the best head start in building up your deck. Bootlegger Stash is a 6 mana artifact that gives your lands the ability to tap in order to produce a treasure token. If you recall, several cards in this deck care about treasure, specifically the mana that's produced by treasure. This can be a great asset to you if you choose to lean more into that strategy, and if you have cards that care about artifacts, well, you can use these. Essica's Chariot is a 4 mana 4-4 four, four artifact vehicle with crew 4. As it enters, you create two 2-2 two, two green cat tokens. Whenever it attacks, you create a token that's a copy of a target token that you control. This is another one similar to the Ham Sphere in that it's a 4-4 four, four that you can animate using Bellow's ability, without having to use the crew ability. It also bringing two tokens with it on just entering is additional value. 
Greater good is a 4-drop enchantment with an activated ability. You could sacrifice a creature to draw cards equal to the sacrificed creature's power and then discard 3 cards. This deck does lean into some larger creatures, especially with Bellow animating our 4-drop enchantments and higher into 4-4 four, four creatures. Since these cards are creatures during our turn, we can use them to attack, gain us value, and then before our turn is out, we sacrifice them to draw some cards. Lotus Cobra is a 2-mana two 2-1 two, snake. It has a landfall trigger, where whenever you have a land enter, you add 1 mana of any color. This is such a powerful ramp spell, and it can come down early enough to give you extra mana each turn. This deck does lean into some heavy spells, with bulk of our better spells being at the 4 slot or greater. Getting this out speeds up the process of getting those cards out. Primeval Bounty is a 6 mana enchantment with a landfall ability that gains us 3 life whenever a land you control enters. It has two other abilities. Whenever you cast a creature spell, you create a 3-3 green beast token. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you put 3 plus one plus one counters onto a target creature you control. This gives a ton of value, especially when considering how many of our spells are non-creatures to give the plus one plus one counters, our board state will grow larger and larger. Tender Shoot Dryad is a 5 drop 2-2 two -two with Ascend. Ascend is the ability that gives you the city's blessing if you control 10 or more permanents. Once you get the city's blessing, you retain it for the remainder of the game. It has two other abilities. At the beginning of each upkeep, you create a 1-1 green sapling token. Each upkeep. Finally, as long as you have the city's blessing, saplings you control get plus two, plus two. This is a very useful token producer as you can get a token on each upkeep, which will net us plenty of tokens. So you've played the deck a number of times and are wanting to upgrade the deck list so it flows better and works better for your playstyle. We want to try to maintain the deck's original game plan, and so while you can take this deck into an entirely different direction, we're going to keep the strategy in the same way as we upgrade the deck. We'll be adding in 15 cards and removing 15 cards. We're not going to worry about our mana base, but the spell package is our priority. For your convenience, in the description of this video we will have a link to a Moxfield list with all of the cards that we will be discussing here. Jolene, Plundering Pugilist, is a 4-2 for 3 mana. Whenever you attack with one or more creatures with power 4 or greater, create a treasure token. You can also pay 2 and sacrifice a treasure to have Jolene deal 1 damage to any target. This leans more into the treasure theme, netting us additional ramp. Since we do have a few cards in the deck that care about treasures, this will give us more treasure. It's also an aggressively costed card, so we can get this out early to begin accruing us value. Sight of the Scale Lords is a 5 mana enchantment. At the beginning of combat on our turn, creatures you control with toughness of 4 or greater get plus 2 plus 2 and gain vigilance till the end of turn. This is giving us extra benefit to our commander, turning our non-creature cards into creatures, making those 4-4 elementals into 6-6 six, six elementals with vigilance. Those are quite the threat. Stimulus Package is a 4 drop that as it enters you create 2 treasure tokens. So more treasure stuff. You could sacrifice a treasure to create a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen creature token. This gives added benefit to the treasures should we not need them for the mana they produce for some reason. I also find some humor in this card since you can animate it and smack someone with your Stimulus Package. If you know, you know. Gruel War Chant is a 4 drop enchantment that gives our attacking creatures plus 1 plus 0 and menace. Excellent evasion on our board, and this leans again into the aggressive way to end games. Horde Hauler is a 4 drop, 5 5 vehicle with trample. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token for each artifact that they control. Obviously, we don't need to use the crew mechanic for this card often as our commander will turn it into a 4-4. This can give us plenty more treasures, especially if the opponent is heavy on artifacts. We're looking at you, Dockside. Roxanne Starfall Savant is a 4-3 for 5 mana. When it enters and attacks, you create a tapped colorless artifact token called Meteorite, with when Meteorite enters, it deals 2 damage to any target and tap add one mana of any color. This card produces mana rocks, and whenever you tap an artifact token for mana, which includes those treasures, you add one mana of any type that that artifact token would have produced. We do run quite a bit of treasure, and while we are a little bit lighter on your typical mana ramp, the treasure this deck produces might in some cases be a bit stronger and more explosive. Destiny Spinner gives our creatures and enchantments protection from counter spells, and we can pay 4 mana to animate our lands into elementals with trample. These lands do get larger based on the number of enchantments we control, which is somewhat what we're leaning into here. I feel like the engine for enchantments in these colors might be stronger than that for artifacts. Don't believe me? I also added Eidolon of Blossoms, a 2-2 for 4 mana with Constellation, which draws you a card whenever it or another enchantment enters under your control. Because of Bellow, this will become an indestructible 4-4 that draws us additional cards as we attack. Nature's Will ramps us by untapping our mana as we connect with our opponents while shutting down the opponent's lands. This also can attack as it becomes animated, adding a small form of stacks to our already crazy strategy. 
Sanctum Weaver ramps us based on our enchantments, meaning that if we do decide to go all in on enchantments, this can give us a ton of mana. Composer of Spring is fun, as it's a constellation ability that gets us a land dropped into play whenever we have an enchantment enter, or if we have six or more enchantments, we can put a creature or land into the battlefield. These do enter tapped, but that's still quite a bit more value that we can have snowball. Professional Facebreaker gives us both more treasures and some impulsive card draw. We have a number of effects like this that gives us one treasure whenever one or more creatures either attack or connect with an opponent, and so these individual effects will give us additional treasures and that will add up quickly. Jolene the Plunder Queen is another creature that gives treasure tokens. This one incentivizes your opponents to attack at each other as they'll get treasure tokens for attacking an opponent. If you would create treasure tokens, you make an additional one each time. You can also sacrifice five treasure tokens to put five plus and plus some counters onto Jolene. It's another treasure producer, and extra treasure is always welcome. Descent into Avernus is a three minute enchantment that is a little bit chaotic. Near the beginning of our upkeep, you put two descent counters on it, and then each player creates X treasure tokens and takes X damage, where X is the number of counters on descent of Avernus. This gives us so many treasure tokens, and it does put a bit of a clock on the game. We want to speed things up sometimes, and so this is a great way to do it. Lastly, Goldspan Dragon has both flying in haste, and when it attacks or is targeted by a spell, you create a treasure token. Your treasure tokens can also tap and sacrifice to add two mana of any one color. We did lean a lot more into the enchantments in our upgrade, but I did put quite a bit of emphasis on utilizing treasure tokens as our primary ramp source. As we can see here, there is potential for explosive turns when you get a ton of mana all at once to play several spells and potentially push for a win. Now of course we do have to cut cards to fit these cards in. My goal in taking these 15 cards in and out is to hone in on the better cards, make more effective card choices, and possibly add in some more ways to win. If you play the deck and find that some cards are better on your own playstyle, feel free to continue using them. These are just my choices and the cards that I either am not a fan of, or I don't think they synergize enough with the deck, or in playtesting they just don't live up to what their role in the deck is supposed to be. I think that this deck is a great entry into Commander, giving you unique deck that can take advantage of both artifacts or enchantments, whichever is your preference. You could in theory go either way with this deck and lean into one strategy you prefer over the other. I'm a huge fan of enchantments, so I leaned more into that card type than artifacts, but at the end of the day, how you develop your deck is entirely up to you. But for now, that will take up our look at the animated army deck. What do you think of this deck? Are there some fun tech cards that you're going to be slotting into your build? Let's talk about it in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, likes and shares are the best way to help our channel's community grow. If you're new here, subscribe and ring the bell to never miss out on future videos. And as always, I appreciate you hanging out with me here today, and I'll catch you all next time.